if you are a Crush Live Poker subscriber, you know that we had an announcement over the last couple of weeks that we have a new content creator coming on to the site. He's already done his first video, and that is Mark Goon, Squish My Tomato, frequent commentator on Hustler Casino Live. And he is actually going to be the very first caller here. And I will preface this by saying, Squish My Tomato, that this is a hand that you will be going over in one of your videos, I'm sure. But I did want to bring it into the call-in show because I think it was so interesting. What's up, Mark? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. Um, I thought this hand was probably the most interesting spot I played on the uh, on the stream last week. So, so do you know off the top um, of your head which episode this came from? Was it last Wednesday or something? Or uh, It was streamed on December 16th. So, okay, December 16th uh, for the live. And then I'll put a link when we make this, I'm sure, a best of for the YouTube folks. I'll put a link in the description for this particular hand so that so that you can follow along. But give us a setup here. Uh, what's the stakes? Full ring, I assume. Yeah, full ring, nine handed. It's a uh, five five fifty, which is my favorite structure in all of Los Angeles poker. So, so five uh, five fifty blind. with a big blind ante. This this game started from live at the bike when we used to do five five with a five ante, and then kind of, I, I think in a smart way, it sort of evolved to the big blind ante, right? Yeah, it just saves a little bit of time if the big blind just puts in the fifty dollars. Yeah, so it's the fifty. A, it's a fifty little, is dead, right? It's a little strange because the blinds are so small, right? With the ante. Yeah, but a lot of times, even on hustler, it ends up straddling. Uh, I think this game ended up straddling to fifty anyway, so it was five five fifty fifty. But at this time, it wasn't straddling. I don't think. So this was just a five five with a fifty ante, and the it's so weird because the the range of open sizes, like this game, will sometimes play bigger than 1020 with the 20 ante right on thursdays or whatever yeah this game's definitely bigger i think most people open anywhere from 125 to like 300 even sometimes um so the game plays pretty and you can see like the stacks in this game if you go back and watch like are all pretty deep usually everybody's somewhere between like 10 and 25k and this is a very recreational game I mean, obviously, yes. you're going to be the only, pretty much probably the only for-profit player. Although, I guess you could call Nick a for-profit player because he's certainly a huge favorite in a lot of these lineups too, right? Yeah, I mean, at this point, Nick's played a lot of poker, and he's uh, he's, yeah. he's definitely beating up on these lineups. So how deep are we in this hand? Uh, I am 11.7K effective with okay. the opener. So I, I cover, and he is the... I guess this flop goes four ways and he's the short stack in his hand at 11.7K. So this game is really, really deep. Okay, so 11.7 is the short stack. So that's, of course, the effective stack. Okay. So under the gun opens to 175. Uh, button calls, small blind calls, and I'm in a big blind with jack seven of spades. And I call. So no straddle you're closing the action with jack seven of spades you're getting quite a price nobody has to really obviously squeeze you it is somewhat interesting here one of the i would say the interesting things about preflop in these types of scenarios i know you know obviously you're you're you, you have an advantage because you're not going to get squeezed but i do find it interesting that some people will play a very wide range from the big blind much wider than they would calling on the button now here it's even more extreme because you're not getting a price at all in terms of the blinds right because it's you're in for five so i would think that i would still be whatever hand you're calling with here in the big blind i would be calling probably on the button at least unless you've got some squeeze happy people to your left in the small and the big blind it's just kind of an interesting thing where people don't really um take that into consideration i think yeah, I think people call too much from everywhere. <laughs> okay, that's simple enough. Simple enough. By the way, I am uh, uh, following along in the live chat. All right, let's. Uh, so, so this pot is one seventy five. Call, call, call. So what, like seven, maybe seven fifty, eight hundred with the antes and stuff. Yeah, it looks like about seven seven fifty ish. Yeah, seven fifty ish. Okay, and the flop comes jack five eight rainbow. So uh, jack of diamonds, uh -huh. eight of spades, five of clubs. Okay, so you flop top pair. You've got some backdoor stuff going on. Yeah, not the worst flop. Under the gun bets four fifty into okay. seven fifty. Uh -huh. 
uh, button folds, small blind folds. And I think there's really not much else for me to do here, but call. Um, I will say like, if, you know, if under the gun bet for 50, which is a huge bet, like, right. He's betting like 60% pot into three other people. If under the gun bet and like button called, I may consider just folding from, uh, the big blind here. Yeah, that wasn't that. That's actually the question that I wanted to ask you about because, obviously, you know, heads up, it's a much easier call than obviously, you know, if somebody else calls. You do have a couple of backdoor things going on, but yeah, I mean, once you see you face a really large bet in a call, especially with no flush draw out there, it. it I I think you know it's interesting because you get like more of a price, but I, I think you can fold some top pairs, you know. Yeah, As I think so. Although it it is like I I have made mistakes. I think in this game, just kind of like LOL folding a little bit too much on flops and turns, just because people like they float so so wide. So I just I I, I kind of want to be cognizant of that because I think this game is kind of a special dynamic where people just call with all types of bullshit on the flop. Um, but yeah, it would it, it would be really tough just to call with like top pair with no kicker when the pre flop razor from under the gun just blasts into four people and someone else calls. Right. Um, so we go heads up to the turn. The pot sixteen fifty. The turn is a five of spades. So you pick up a flush draw now. Jack of diamonds eight of spades. Five of clubs. Turns a five of spades. Again, the hero's got jack seven of spades. Check calls four fifty. Heads up. Pot sixteen fifty. Now the turn here is a spade. Okay. And I check, and he kind of, like, instantly checks back, like, snap checks back. So UTG checks back. I don't know what the deal is with this guy. I was not familiar with him when I watched this particular hand. It is something to note that it's a little ambitious for a guy just to, like, fire out 450, right, into three people. Like, if he just had nothing, or, like, tens or nines or ace king or, or something like that. But you would think that he would continue here with over pairs. I mean, obviously you can have a five. I mean, you're probably one of the only people that can have a five. Like this would probably be a pure bet all day long if he bet next act called, right? Because next act can't really, isn't supposed to have a five with two people behind. You can have a five, but I, I still would tend to think if the game was somewhat, you know, recreational that you're, you're going to see a lot of betting with over pairs here on the turn. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think he would continue firing quite a bit with over pairs. Although I, I do see like recreational players like kind of, um, even though the five hits me here, I do see like it, or the five can hit me. I do see a lot of recreational players kind of just like mindlessly check back over pairs a lot in these games when like a, when like middle or bottom card pairs, even if like the the other caller can't have it um so i'd reduce the combinations of over pairs but i still think he can have some um and i definitely think he can have some jack x um you know 10 jack all the way up through ace jack and i also think like guys just kind of mindlessly uh see bet too much with kind of like middling type hands so like i think he can have some hands like pocket nines pocket tens like ace eight ace eight nine like those type of hands like eight x or like pocket nines or pocket tens a lot as well i mean i would be thinking that i would probably have the best hand here a fair amount if it goes check behind i mean it's possible that people are playing pot control because the game is a little bit big for them maybe they're not necessarily in these large games all that much it's just interesting that the, the setup of the large bet and the check back so it continues to be 1650 as we roll the river right yeah my thoughts going to this river are exactly what you just said like i fare to have the best hand here quite a bit so i liked and this is something i've been working into my game uh quite a bit in these past uh maybe in the past month or two as i've been doing more solver work um i like to go for a block bet size on the river and my reasoning behind the block bet size is one i think like i can get called by like ace eight or eight nine or right. pocket tens here where those hands would just check back mm -hmm. and also if i go for the block size i think if he has a hand like king jack or queen jack he's just going to call and if i checked he would use a larger sizing 
Um, so what ends up happening is I get paid, I get value when I have the best hand from hands that would check back, and I end up losing less when he kind of pips me here with a better jack. Yeah, just by happenstance, I've talked a lot about block betting recently on, on Crash Live Poker. One of the things about blocking the river, though, and what you say is definitely true, but one of the things about blocking the river is is that you have to be able to get called by a worse hand, I think, for, for, for a block to make sense. It doesn't make any sense if a block can never get called by a worse hand. Now, obviously, in this situation, it absolutely can. If a block can't get called by a worse hand, then blocking makes no sense because you should, uh, I think a better way to play the hand is to check and evaluate sizing. And it's either a check fold, given the pod odds, or a check call. But you can block because you can get called by worse. So, it, you know, it's it's kind of, um, you know, two of those types of things. Plus, better can't necessarily raise you either. With that being said, like, if you didn't use a block sizing, though, say the river was a deuce and you decided to check and the guy, say, like, bet a thousand, that's a very underbluffed line, I think. I mean, I would consider even check folding. It's just a very, you know, it sounds kind of crazy because nothing has really changed except the fact that the line has changed, right? The bet again is changing itself. Yeah, I do think the uh, the bet check bet line is under bluffed and is usually just going to be like medium strength type value. Yeah. Which I lose to all the medium strength value that would take like a $1,000 size in here, I would lose to. Right, right, right. I mean, that's what I, I, I sort of tend to agree with you. All right. So what is, uh, what's the river? So the river is the four of clubs, and I go for the block bet of 500 into 1650. So the four of clubs, sorry, you bet 500 into 1650. The four of clubs not being a brick because obviously it brings in the six, seven draw, which I think you would have more of than the preflop razor. Would you call a six, seven off here when it goes call, call in, in a game this soft from the big blind? Um, I mean, that one's supposed to be a fold. Um, but I mean, in, in, in this game, I may just be in there with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's pretty close. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty close. I, I may have it some of the time specifically in this, especially when the small blind comes in as well. Um, I may have it some of the time here, just from the... I really shouldn't also from your opponent's perspective I, again i don't know the guy but i don't assume he's not opening six seven off maybe maybe he has some six seven suited from up front but usually that that's going to continue barreling on turn I, I feel like a fair amount of the time although although it might sometimes take a card because nothing has necessarily changed I'm just trying to think of how often you know your opponent might have a have a six seven type hand okay so you bet 500 into 1650 yeah, so I go 500, and he just immediately snap raises to 1,500. Okay, so Sorry. 3x. He raises to 3x. So, wow, so it's just kind of a snap raise here to 1,500. And and now, like, that kind of raise almost... <laughs> it's so strange that I, it kind of almost seems like maybe it was an overpair, kind of a, a minish type of raise, but, like, overpairs really shouldn't raise... I don't think all that much when you have a fair amount of six sevens and stuff like fives in your hand and things like that. Could the, you know, is obviously your blocking pocket jacks, you know, would this guy have like eights full uh, or something like this? I mean, this can't re this is probably never a bluff, right? It's, it's, it's literally never a bluff when he goes bet check raise I think that line is maybe the most under bluff line in poker. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I just think it's never a bluff. But so I think I'm beat 100% here. But the interesting thing is, right, that he really doesn't have a lot of the 6-7. And especially because I have a 7 in my hand, which reduces his combos further. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think this is just going to be a hand like ace jack or pocket queens or pocket kings a lot and he's just kind of raising the river because i take a small sizing and he's just trying to eke out a little bit more value because he figures after i bet so small in the river that i just don't have a five so if you did have six seven here like let's say you actually had six seven or you had a five let's say you had whatever five not full right five six suited ace five whatever whatever it is, would you three bet the river though? I mean, that's, that's, what's in, interesting about this Hank because six, seven, no, comes I would, in. 
uh, this is this is extremely exploitative and obviously i wouldn't do this against um a non-recreational player but if i had six seven here or if i had if i had five x i would just 1.2 x or 1.5 x the river um i wouldn't go for the block, the block bed sizing. sizing right i right. would just take a huge sizing um because i think like jack x is never folding and over pairs are never folding mm -hmm. but i also think like when i block and then go for the raise i think everything folds except full houses so it, it's kind of exploitative like i obviously wouldn't split my range like this against um a very strong player mm -hmm. um but in this scenario yeah i just it, when i have value here i just go 1.2x or 1.5x like i just bet 2k on the river and just he just calls with um you know, ace jack or queens or whatever. So it sounds to me like you're smelling something here. This is something that's not typical where you take a hand like top air. Are you thinking about turning this into a bluff? Because I think we both agree that you're not good if called, right? So folding is better than calling here. Is that? Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm never calling. Like okay. this is never a bluff. And my hand at this point, like is just garbage. But my hand does have some interesting properties in that really the only hands I'm worried about um, are pocket eights. Which he could certainly have pocket eights, but I do think that he may bet the turn with some frequency of pocket eights. But pocket eights is a possibility. Um, pocket jacks, which I block, so right. it seems very unlikely that he could have jacks. And then six seven, which again I block six seven, mm -hmm. and also I think six seven, like you said, would barrel the turn quite a bit. So like my hand has some cool properties in that I block pretty much all the very strong hands that I'm worried about because I think if I bet three bet this river as a bluff he's pretty much folding everything except pocket eights or if he had um, pocket fives for quads yeah exactly right That's right it. right and then or, i or mean po pocket fours if he does you know then this is sort of off the rails to see about like you know and the sizing or something like that you're not getting him to full boats that's for sure but it seems to me like you're sort of picking up on kind of a live experience where and i tend to agree with you that it's just a weird maybe you say like a live tell to betting pattern and pacing which i do think is actually a live tell that and I said it at the top of the river, like it almost seems like it's an overpair, right? The snap to 1500, because a lot of the thick nut hands will take some time with it, right? Also take time in the pacing on the turn as well, in terms of the snap check back. Like if someone had four fives or eights full, this is really where I do think that live poker and experience come into play. I, I, I would find it um, rare of a snap check back turn, snap sort of 3x river. There's got to be some thought. This is why I talk about sometimes you can make hero calls when the nuts change on the river and guys still go in stride with like pacing uh, in position. Like they're just betting like without regard to the river and you can make some big hero calls. This is a little bit similar to that in terms of pacing, snap, check back, super nutted hand, snap, snap, 3x river. There's some thought. I don't know what you think about that, Squish. If you can I 100% I agree. I, yeah. I do think that's another factor. I think if he had a hand like pocket eights here, he would at least like either on the turn or on the river or both, at least take like five to 10 seconds to think about, oh, should I check this or should I bet it on the turn? And on the river, he, you know, he would think like at least for a second about sizing. This to me is just saying, oh, he bet small. So let's raise because I have a pretty good hand. And when he bets small, I'm not scared of his hand anymore. So now what about sizing? If you're thinking about three bet bluffing here? I don't think I have to go crazy here. Um, I think this line from me, the bet three bet river is just so, so rarely a bluff. I think if I just put in like a decent raise sizing that I fold out everything I want to fold, I think all the over pairs fold and all the Jack X folds to like a decent rate. I don't think I have to go all in to get the job done. So like to 5,000, maybe 4,500 to 5,000. Yeah. I, I raised to 4,800 here. 4,800. By the way, what's the time code here on this hand? I know you're playing. Uh, back. This is at two hours and 57 minutes. Two hours and 57 minutes of the 1216 um, Hustler Casino Live, which is of course all free on their YouTube channel. So you raise it up to 4,800. You made some like nice little like sort of reverse live tells and stuff like that. So a block bet, three bet river. It's kind of interesting here too, because sometimes you, <laughs> this kind of reminds me of scenarios where you bluff the river, you actually bet the river at the end with a bluff, and then you get raised. I've been in situations where I've bluffed the river and then called the raise, 
where I have yeah. a hand that I felt like was a bluff, but in response to my bluff, there was a raise, and I thought my hand was strong enough to bluff catch a polarized range with a raise. Here, you're blocking the river for other reasons, and now sort of pull an audible to bet three bet here. So you make it 4,800. So, I mean, at this point here, 2150, uh, 3650, maybe like 8,400, like 33 for him to call, something like that. So you go to 4,800, and what happens? Uh, he thinks for like two seconds, turns his cards face up and folds. And what did he um, fold? Jack eight of hearts for top two pair. Wow. That's like got to be one of the best hands for him to call with there, right? Don't yeah, you think? I would, I would, I would think that I mean, would blocking probably, a lot probably of the, be the one. Blocking a lot of the boat to me, he doesn't know if you're that you're not really blocking here with a bet three, you know, that you don't really have six, seven because of the block here. But a lot of people aren't going to bet three bet you know, six, seven here. So when you bet three bet, you're, uh, you know, against that rest of that typical lineup, it's going to be boat. So Jack eight's got, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, a, I mean, that's got to be better than aces here, right? To call with well, I, for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's, yeah. it's one of the best hands, if not the best hand to call with. But like what I've noticed the state of live poker is, is two things. One, I think bluffing is the new thin value betting. And what I mean by that was five years ago to really beat up on the mid stakes game. Um, I think thin, thin value betting was the key to win rate, right? Mm -hmm. And now I think still thin value betting on flops and turns, people call way too wide. But now I think people like massively overfold rivers, especially to river raises. Mm -hmm. And I think people just massively, massively, massively overfold these spots just because they never see it. Because no one fucking, no right. one, no one check raise bluffs rivers. Right. No one does it. And of course, um, I mean, for some of the guys that are going crazy in the chat, I mean, these are, this is hugely, hugely sort of far from optimal. And this is just drawing on experience of what Squish and I have seen, you know, combined 25, 30 years of live poker. I've probably played live poker a little bit more than, than Squish, maybe three times, but he's got a lot of hands and a lot of hours in and just taking kind of that, that, that exploit and especially against the typical sort of recreational players. Yeah, I, um, for sure. And I, I the, the, the last point I want to make is I think I tweeted this the other day, but I think um, turning bluff catchers into bluffs is one of the most profitable things you can do as you're moving up past five ten and beyond bluff catchers meaning that you're going to raise the river right if you have a bluff well like catcher. If, if if you have like a bluff catch if you have like a bluff catcher that's like a good hand to maybe call with like uh -huh. you have like middle pair like blocking them having the nuts and you're like oh well he could be bluffing here this is a good hand to call with like i think it's almost always more profitable to instead of calling with a bluff catcher to actually turn your bluff catcher into a bluff because people fold so much well i will caveat that though and say that that you should not do that if you truly think you're up against a polarized range though right well yeah yes for sure and this but is a I, situation where we don't think that's the case and we talked it through but you should not turn a bluff catcher into a bluff if you think you're the villain is super strong or he's bluffing because yes, there's no reason sure. to, right? <laughs> for sure. But if yeah. like if you're in a situation that that is correct, and that's a that's a good delineation. Yeah. But if you're in a situation where the opponent can be making thin value bets or is betting a linear range, turning a bluff catcher into a bluff, I think is is printing money in in cash games at, that I've seen over the last year or two. Squish, thanks a lot for the call. Again, Squish is a new content contributor on Crash Live Poker. He's going to be doing videos every second Friday of the month. And you can watch him commentate, I would say, what, once a week. Are you doing tonight on Monday? Are you doing Hustler tonight? I'm not doing tonight. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. So as a precaution, I am, uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm sitting out tonight. But I'll, I'll be back uh, either next week or the week after. So Okay. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Mark. All right.